we started with uh, identify some items on Dweck's growth mindset. We identified some items from uh, Angel Duckworth's grit. Um, and then based on the literature review, um, and then Martin did a fantastic job in the literature review, um, you know, took a look at other items, came up with a survey, um, started with, uh, and we gave that survey to 17,000 students. Okay. Now, as we were developing these items, we also did focus groups to ensure that students could understand the questions, right? And so there were two forms. There's a 3-5 form, and then there's also a form that uh, was 6-12. Six um, you know, we, we did focus groups. Uh, we did another measure in the summer with another 1,000 to 2,000 students. We did another measure with another 17,000 students. Um, and then this year, we're going to give a, a survey to another 17 to 18,000 students. Um, so what I'm really excited about is like this has been a very consistent, thoughtful process because what's interesting in the literature on social emotional is that you're not going to see a lot of uh, studies such as uh, the work that Michael's done. It's very rare that you see data sets with 160,000 cases. In fact, it's going to be extremely rare when you see a data set in a district. Right? School districts and out-of-school time folks don't necessarily get along very well. Research and evaluation departments, out-of-school time groups, we don't typically get along really well. So we're not able oftentimes to validate the measures with school district data sets. Okay? So we've been able to look at this across three years, 17,000 cases. Each time we're able to get a stronger measure, um, you know, I'm not going to uh, go deep into this, but, the, but you know, a series of factor analysis, looking at items, grouping of student, if items um, don't seem to group well and they're not attached to the domain of academic persistence, we remove those items. But I think over time we've really, uh, you know, come up with a really nice rating. And I think Michael talked about um, some of the, uh, the ideas of scaling and, and, you know, for us we actually, well, I'll show you, we have a 10-point point, uh, scale here. So here's the data, which is interesting to me. Uh, you know, there's a not a lot, again, this is what's interesting about this, these measures. There's not a lot of variation, um, you know, in these measures. And a lot of it is we're really trying to refine these measures, right? I mean, this is when you're looking at it over multiple years. But if you look at that third grade, and so we have the third through 12th grade, you do see that the persistence, the measure, the scores, the ratings decline as the students get older, generally, okay? And there's a variety of reasons about that. Um, I'm excited about going and asking students directly what that means, right? Um, you know, we can speculate that, uh, for example, students, and I think about the students who are not achieving to their full capability. If you go through your educational process and you continue to have failure and failure and failure, right, the rational thing to do is to de-identify from that domain of learning, which could be reading or it could be math, and align yourself with something you do well, right? That's one of the things when I look at my son, my son loves video games. Right? And in fact, he'll play video games all weekend, all night. Right? And a lot of students are playing video games, they, they figure out that the more you, time you put in, right, the better you get. 